Okay, you're welcome. Uh, we will give it a, a few more minutes because uh, there will be uh, more people uh, attending. So be patient, a few more minutes, and then we will start the webinar. Okay, I would like to welcome everybody to today's webinar on transforming assets to plan and start solving the ISO 55 challenge with our partner, the UMS Group. We have a great group of attendees from all around the world, so we are very happy and pleased to go start our presentation. Some information about the webinar itself. Uh, this will be recorded and posted afterwards online and please use the question panel to raise any questions and we will try to answer them at the end of the presentation and if we're not able to we will individually answer them by email. So, so my name is Michael Kuhl, I'm the manager of global business development for Revesta Partners and I will uh, do a, a piece of the, inf uh, of the presentation and uh, Next speaker up is uh, Jan Schipper, a short introduction. He's the managing director of the UMS Group in Europe. And the strong differentiator of the UMS Group is that they are also an endorsed assessor. So we complement each other, providing the whole range to successfully solving the ISO 55000 challenge and have worked side by side successfully together in the past. The objective of the webinar is to understand the ISO 55000, what it means for an organization, the line of sight, asset management governance to a plan, and guidance approach to enablement of SAP. Uh, so we'll do the introduction, give a little highlight of the asset policy and risk, do the SAP enablement, and then we will take questions in the back, at the back. So, sorry about that. So, who is FASTA, the introduction of FASTA itself? We're headquartered in Connecticut and we have offices in Europe, Canada, Australia, Southeast Asia, and FASTA is a select consulting partner focused on delivering measurable results in the enterprise asset management globally. We help customers build solid business practices that they are enabled with the right technology applications. So, at FASTA, our customer can count on us for us in implementing and providing system analysis for SAP Enterprise Asset Management Solutions, analysis on technology partner landscape and recommendations for the right solutions, implementing solutions on time within budget and with a clear re return on investment, and delivering cost-effective asset management and performing impro improvements. Festa also has a strong partnership with EAM NISP solution providers, the, these, new, these uh, niche solution providers enable the whole asset life cycle, uh, uh, whole asset life cycle, like Riva Modeling, Safran, OpenTex, Volta, Meridium. So, why do, uh, if you look at the slide, why do customers uh, put trust in us? We, we do have real experience uh, within maintenance. A lot of our consultants are uh, previously uh, had maintenance positions and transitions towards 
uh, an IT and being the uh, linking partner between the, the business and IT, we're pushing forward the best breed solutions. Uh, and what differentiates us from our competitors, we only focus on SAP and enterprise asset management. And we have aligned our solutions and strategy with the industry standards like the ISO 55000 and SAP and time-tested methodologies and accelerators that deliver compelling return of investment have proven us in the future, in the, in the past. So now I'm handing over to Jan Schipper to explain a little bit more about the ISO 55000 and what it means for an organization. Okay, thank you, Michael, um, um, and welcome all to this uh, webinar. And before we dive into the content of uh, asset management and ISO 55000, let me shortly introduce UMS Group. Uh, UMS Group um, has been founded in 1989 uh, in the United States. Uh, it's a management consulting firm uh, working internationally. Uh, we have offices in the United States, uh, um, Persephone, close to New York, in Europe, Amsterdam, and in Asia Pacific, uh, in Sydney, to be precise, and in uh, Manila. Um, we only focus on the energy and utility industry and the energy and utility market. We have a customer base of around 400 customers worldwide. And in fact, our specialization is management consulting in asset management, uh, strategic asset management, commercial asset management. And as of the early days, we have been involved in the development of the international standards. In the early days of uh, 2000, uh, it, it has been an involvement uh, in the development of PAS 55, uh, which was published in 2004 and uh, reviewed and republished in 2008. And later, we were uh, involved in the development of ISO 55000 that has been launched in uh, 2014. UMS Group was one of the first companies that became recognized by the Institute of Asset Management and was recognized as endorsed assessor, and we still are, uh, and are at the moment endorsed assessor for PAS 55 and ISO 55000, meaning that we are uh, uh, credible in doing uh, assessments, gap analysis, but also certifications in uh, PAS 55 and ISO 55000. Next slide, please. Next, Michael. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pressing. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so let me start with some uh, 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 context and content. Uh, so what's happening in the world? Uh, as everybody knows, and I'm not telling uh, anything new here, that uh, many markets, also the energy and utility market, is in a major, major transition. And these transitions uh, put from many different perspectives enormous uh, pressure on the shoulders of uh, 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 members, uh, board members, management teams of the utilities. These, these pressures can come from technical innovations, uh, like, uh, example, smart grids, uh, I would almost say revolution that is taking place at the moment. Or, for example, in Europe, the, the, the tighter constraints and laws uh, where we have to comply with uh, which come from Europe. Uh, or the economic crisis, uh, which gives uh, uh, constraints on our financial uh, uh, position and working capital that is available. Just to give some examples of what's happening nowadays, many tra uh, changes, transition of the market, lots of stakeholders that, that have uh, uh, conflicting demands uh, on my organization, and it's my task as, uh, as management to balance that. Next slide, please. And the difficulty is, if all these stakeholders would have the same kind of demands, it would not be so much an issue, but they have uh, uh, competing, sometimes uh, conflicting demands uh, and push it uh, into your company as an external driver. You need to do uh, to manage these forces. They are conflicting. Uh, and to give some examples, if you have external shareholders, probably they want to uh, have a lot of focus on the return on investment. If you have customers, which are an important stakeholder group, they are not in interested in your return on investment. They want to have a fair price, but especially a high quality. If you look at the government as an important uh, uh, shareholder, stakeholder, 
they are more interested whether you are compliant with the laws, yes or no. And employees, if they go to a birthday party, they want to be proud eh? and they, they are much more interested in image, but also in a safe working environment. And all these different stakeholders have different uh, demands that are pushed on me as an organization and I have to balance that. And uh, um, well, that's a difficult story. It starts, it's a top-down process. It starts at the top and how does it translate through into, let's say, in the end, how you configure your SAP solution. Well, there has been uh, uh, developed a, uh, a common international language. Next. To give an answer and to help you as organizations, uh, in the UK, it has started in the early uh, years of 2000, that, uh, that they saw the need of uh, understanding and describing how you have to make a connection between these external changes and drivers and the day-to-day -day work that you are doing. Because if you don't do that, you have a disconnect uh, and uh, there's no line of sight in your decision making. And at first this was described, how to do that in the requirements of PAS 55, uh, and you see a picture of it, uh, which was published in 2004 and the second release in 2008. And the PAS 55 requirements were the fundament or the input for the ISO 55000, which was published uh, and released in 2014. And if you read it through, it's boring, don't take it with you on vacation, <laughs> but uh, it will give you uh, a manual which describes how an asset management system should look like and how all the bits and pieces, from structure to processes to IT technology to skills that you need, how it all fits together into one system and how you can establish this connection between your external drivers and the day-to-day -day decisions that you're making. Next. The summary of what it describes looks like this. It, it talks about line of sight or alignment uh, in your business and it says that at organizational level, you need to have an organizational strategic plan where you balance your stakeholder needs. Uh, this is very high level. You can't use it in day-to-day -day operations, so you need to translate it into your asset management system and uh, describe common principles that you want to apply within your asset management system. And from that, if you have these principles, you can derive asset management strategies. Uh, and how you want to deliver these strategies. And these strategies, you can add to that specific objectives per uh, system or per, per asset. And in the end, if you have these uh, objectives, you can uh, um, uh, apply them on existing assets or uh, uh, new assets. And this brings it down to the day-to-day -day activities that you are doing. And if, uh, if you are looking at the ISO 55000, it describes how you have to build up a system from strategic, uh, organizational strategic plan, align it step by step till you are at, uh, let's say, your work order in SAP. And each work order in SAP should have an immediate connection to the strategic goals of your company. And how this system looks like, that's described in the ISO 55000. Next slide. In the end, that's, that's our vision. You're uh, 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 if you talk about this connecting uh, strategic topics to the day-to-day -day decisions, you're talking about connecting decision risks, which you see in this picture bottom right, with business risks. And decision risks are those risks, so if, if I have a project and I have to decide am I going to do this, yes or no, that's a decision risk. Uh, a business risk is uh, if you have decided not to do it, what will be the impact of uh, reaching my strategic goals, and that's a business risk. Uh, and this making this connection between all the decisions that you take on a day-to-day -day basis, decision risks, with the business risks, that's alignment. That's where uh, uh, ISO 55000 is all about. Of course, there are other dimensions if you talk about risk. For example, uh, uh, you, you have assets that can have failure modes, eh? those are asset risks, and those are more technical, engineering orientated. And there's a relation between a business risk, a decision risk, and an asset risk. Uh, and you also have, if you do large projects, that you have project risk. Uh, uh, you can have a budget overrun or uh, uh, 
a permit that's too late, that's also an implementation risk, a project risk, which is related to the system. But the core, where ISO 55000 is all about, is making this connection between decision risk and business risk. Next. So in the heart, if you look at asset management system as it is described in the, in the ISO 55000, you start with, okay, I need to understand my business risk. A business risk is a potential threat that might impact my strategic, strategic goals. Just to determine whether something is a business risk or not, I need to have a framework, let's say a risk matrix, which helps me identify what are the, the key risks. These risks, I, I collect them in a risk register, and my task as asset manager is to keep these in control. To keep this in control, I develop asset strategies. Uh, examples of asset strategies are uh, maintenance uh, uh, strategies or replacement strategies. So those are the documents in which you describe, this is my business risk and I'm going to do this replacement to keep this risk in control. In the end, these, these uh, documents result into long-term plans uh, and you derive from these long-term plans projects and activities that you're going to do next year and the year after. That would be your portfolio. And the ISO 55000 requirements uh, ask you to build a system where you have a connection between business risks, asset strategy, and your portfolio. So that if you would decide, hey, I don't have enough sufficient budget or resources to do this project, that you also would know, ah, but if I don't do this project, it has an impact on my risk position. If you are able to build a system like that, then uh, you would say, following the requirements of ISO 55000, this is line of sight. So this is, this is uh, the overview uh, of ISO 55000. This is what you are uh, going to build if you want to be compliant to ISO 55000. Next. The difficulty here is that if you have an asset base, which is relatively new, young, uh, you don't have a lot of data issues yet because, well, in the beginning, uh, in an early stage of your life cycle, it's more important that you understand the statical data. Uh, what, what equipment do I have? What, what was the year of building? Who is the supplier of it? And uh, if you use it for a while, you start building up performance data and start building up systems where you can follow the condition. The difficulty starts when your assets start aging and you're more towards the end of the life cycle and uh, you know that your constraints become more critical in terms of budget and resources and maybe other constraints and you need to have uh, a lot of information data to take the right decisions. And let us face the current situation in the market. Many of, of uh, the utilities have aging assets. Uh, uh, and are in the stage of uh, uh, end of life cycle, meaning that they, they have a huge need of risk data, uh, uh, data where they can build the fundament of their decisions on. And this makes the connection of ISO 55000 to how you configure your SAP so relevant and which information you are collecting to SAP. Next. In the end, uh, 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 if you look at this line of sight, if you look at your project portfolio, where you have gathered all your projects, and you have the information of what it will cost this year, next year, and where you have the planning dates, uh, and what you're going to do, it will bring you to the question, what am I going to do this year with this project? Am I going to fund it, or am I going to defer it? If I'm going to fund it, I know for sure that it has to contribute to my strategic goal. So how much would it uh, uh, bring as uh, strategic value? That's the question you want to have to answer when you fund the project. But if you don't fund it, you will have a risk and uh, you will be exposed to an additional risk, a risk of deferral. And you want to know what the impact of each project is uh, when I defer it. So how much additional risk would I get? And if I defer a project, it would mean that your overall risk position at the left side uh, 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 would grow. Right? You're more exposed to risk if you defer projects. That's in 
practical, the decision-making risk where we are talking about where I started with. And that's what you do on a daily basis if you decide I'm going to do this project or I'm not going to do that. And ISO 55000 uh, helps you to balance and understand, okay, am I still in control of my risk position? It all, of course, feeds into these projects that you're going to do are fed into SAP and you have to manage them and you have to monitor the condition of your assets. And here you see the bridge to as, uh, from uh, ISO 55000 in control of your risk and what does it mean for uh, configuring SAP. Next. One step deeper, just to give you an explanation, if you go to the right of this picture, you see work orders. And, uh, Normally, if you have implemented your SAP system, you will have many maintenance plans, inspection plans, uh, etc., resulting in work orders. If you talk about alignment in ISO 55000, it means that if you have a work order, there should be a direct relation to uh, your strategic goals. Or, starting at the right, I have a work order. It needs to come from a project in my portfolio. The project in my portfolio uh, is defined because it's balancing, huh? it's mitigating one or more of the business risks and business risk connected. Huh? Those are those threats that have a major impact on your strategic goals or financially or on safety or on quality of service. And the balance of your strategic goals were determined from the stakeholders that you had, employees, regulated governments. Uh, so try to ma imagine uh, your SAP, take a work order, and can you give an answer if this work order can be directly connected and tracked and traced back to programs, risks, and uh, business values? And what would it mean if you suddenly have a major change in your business values uh, because uh, a stakeholder pushes a new external uh, demand on you? What would it mean for your work orders? That's ISO 55000, that's the alignment where you're looking at. And uh, I hope that if I show you this picture that you can see the direct uh, connection between how you configure SAP and what it means if you, uh, if you have changes in your strategic objectives. Next. In the end what you see is that leading asset managers have developed processes to be able to balance this. Uh, and especially the process that is called RED in this picture is a new set of processes that you that you need to develop. It's, it starts with, at the right side, the portfolio optimization, which needs to be connected to your risk framework. But it also needs to have a, uh, a risk piece where you uh, uh, capture uh, issues, evaluate whether it's a risk, and capture that in a risk register, and it all should be connected to the same framework, which I would call business value framework. Uh, as UMS Group, we have developed a specific decision support tool called SOS for this uh, piece of the overall asset management system. I started the story with line of sight saying that the company strategy should be aligned to the asset management policy, asset management strategy, planning, and uh, 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 this process is your asset planning process. And for example, Riva Modeling, one of our partners, has a functionality developed to support this piece. If you have selected your portfolio, you're going to uh, start doing all the projects, and then you come into the domain of uh, SAP, where the project structure is set up, the asset register is set up, and where you also capture asset performance information. And what I wanted to show in this picture is that Setting up ISO 55000 also means that you need to have dedicated tools and there's a strong relation with how you configure SAP. And what's the strong relation to SAP and how you configure it is, I would like to hand over to Michael again because uh, he, he will show you some more slides what the impact of ISO 55000 in fact means on how you configure SAP. Michael, over to you. Okay, thank you, Jan, uh, for uh, highlighting the key elements of the ISO 55000 and uh, how certain uh, how certain elements need to be covered by people, process, and IT enablement in SAP, either either uh, RIFA modeling or a uh, risk mitigation tool, as you proposed yourself, to fully enable the value of the potential of the ISO uh, ISO framework. 
I will deep dive a little bit more in the ISO 55000 and the requirements and how are you able to level them into SAP as an example. So if you look at the ISO 55001 asset management system requirements, you're looking here at the slide of the overview of the chapters and I will just briefly highlight a few items of them because John already highlighted a few, I just want to add a, a few more context on this. So if you're looking at the chapter for the context of the organization, it's, it's all about translating the asset management system scope and align the site of the, the stakeholder itself into a system. And the asset management system is a, a whole and a part of that, as been explained, can be landed in SAP. If you're looking at leadership, you're really looking at the organizational role and responsibilities in the authorities, uh, authorizations. If you reflect that back to SAP, if you're looking, uh, utilizing new technologies like, for instance, uh, 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 multi-resource scheduling, you need to have defined what kind of people, what kind of quality do I need to, to service a certain engine or a certain motor and, and enable the system to know that so you are mitigating all risk for, uh, for problems. If you're looking at planning, planning, it, it will allow you to, the ability uh, to manage and address all actions and risks to achieve the objective. So you're looking at managing the, the, the oversight of all, uh, all your assets and bring them into, bring them to respect in regards to the strategy as well. Support. Support is a very, very challenging one, which we see if, if you want to embed that in SAP, it's, it's, it's a very large one because if you just think about if you have to drive all information, asset relevant information into a system, think about the structured data, so bill of materials, uh, uh, the, the, op, uh, the, the, the functional locations, the, the equipment themselves, but also the unstructured part is, is like the drawings and uh, the safety fact sheets. Uh, Operations, management of change uh, is, is, is a very eminent one. So you're being in control of all your changes which we've done to the asset management system based on fact finding that you do see in the system or as Jan explains from an outside change, maybe the requirements from, uh, from, uh, from, the, from the municipal or from the government changed which affects your, your system and you have to see how it translates but you want to see the follow-up as well that if you have made a change what, what the, how did the change impact either financially or uh, 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 effectively on the operational effectiveness of a machine and if you think about uh, uh, evaluate and improve it's, it's all about the, uh, the Deming circle so think about the ISO it, build on the plan, do, check and adjust and you keep this, uh, this alive. It's not like you have implemented your all okay. No, you need to, to make adjustments uh, according as you go along with your system as well. So what I'm going to do in the next slide, I'm going to translate this a little bit deeper into an asset life cycle and start highlighting elements of SAP. So if you look at this slide, this is the uh, this the ISO uh, ISO requirement. Looking at from uh, from an asset life cycle, so you have your plan, design, procure, build, commission, operate, maintain, and decommission state. Underneath are the process levels of asset portfolio and commissioning, asset visibility and performance, and asset operations and the maintenance the maintenance pieces. I will highlight these three blue arrows, and deep dive a little bit more in the requirement versus the enablement in SAP. So the asset portfolio and commissioning. If you, if you look at this, we are looking at three, three levels. So it's the ISO requirement context box. It's the capability you want to drive from the ISO. It's, it's translated and then the solution. All the green boxes are SAP solutions and if you're not all that well uh, educated yet with SAP, it's all about learning the acronyms. So <laughs> if you indulge me, if you're looking at the portfolio, it's been called out to, from, uh, by, uh, by Jan many times. So if you're looking at portfolio management, 
it's uh, building your strategic asset management. So in your portfolio, your plan, you, you're going to approve, you're going to execute, and you're going to monitor that. That's the ability uh, within PPM. So and within PPM, you can execute the projects as well. And then it goes into firstly an investment management. So you have to see the finances, build your proper uh, hierarchy in regards to the financial structure. You want to tap in what, where the costs are being allocated towards an assets. And if the assets are being born in the capital projects, which is released from, uh, from, from PS, you have already the transparency, like, okay, I had an, uh, uh, an idea of, uh, of, a, of a structure in PPM, then you start initiating PS projects from it, and you can derive it all the way back, start monitoring, and execute based on top of it. And you start your asset life cycle on the, on the dot once it's being commissioned, you have it uh, uh, attached towards, um, towards asset accounting, so it's a financial asset and a tangible asset within the maintenance organization, and then you release it to prepare and deploy asset information within your EAM enterprise asset management, and we're looking at, uh, at uh, PM. But to be very sure that you have a proper handover from, from the from from, uh, from the project organization towards the uh, maintenance organization operations. You need to have uh, manage your project, uh, your risk, and, and you're seeking also an enablement with uh, external parties to, uh, to allow you to uh, be sure that all information needed uh, by during the build is being collected and being pushed back in your, in your dedicated asset management system being uh, PM in this case. And looking at the monitoring and uh, the monitoring and the maintain, it's all about master data governance. And as I just said, during those, uh, those build phases, be sure that you have your master data governance already in place uh, and your enterprise content management. So support, you need to support a smooth uh, smooth handover of structured and unstructured data as soon as possible because that drives asset your part is your your information needs which you have for utilizing your assets in in their life cycle so think about the object hierarchy bill of material structured structured data that is and unstructured data think about your uh, your uh, per, uh, your uh, fact sheets and uh, and drawings So if you look at the asset visibility and the performance, uh, and again in the capability matrix, performance measurement, it's been said as well by Jan, what you can't measure, you can't, you can't manage. Uh, it's been said awfully, uh, it's said many, many times everywhere around the world. So now looking at your performance measurements is asset analytics. So how are my assets doing, but also uh, driving uh, via MII the IT uh, OT integration, and this is this is the end state sought by by many organizations, mo mo most commonly the asset intensive organizations, where instead of a separation of I and OT technology areas, which different areas of author authority and responsibility, there is an integrated process. Uh, which enables you to, to drive predictive uh, analytics and maintenance. So instead of having the routine calendar-based maintenance, you can do it uh, based on certain uh, subsets uh, and let it drive, for instance, from a SCADA system. And looking at your improvement process and optimization, you, you start using, as Jan explained, you're using your work orders, which are directly related to an asset, to, to start mining your transactional data, your costs, and that will feed back into your asset, um, asset strategy. And you see Meridium, so reliability-centered maintenance is core. It's again the Deming circle, like full closure. Are we doing the right things at the right time? And based on what we said, that the objective of this asset it needs to bring us. So you start feeding more and more information on an asset which allows you mining and uh, feedback loop towards yes we're doing the right thing at the right time 
or we need to change. So the asset, uh, so looking at the asset uh, operations and maintenance, now you're coming more in the, in the, in the operational part. So looking at the, the capability of, uh, of planning and scheduling. As I said prior as well, MRS, multi-resource scheduling, it's all about having the right people at the right time, the right tools, the right equipment, uh, but you need to feed the system with these information as well. So if you really want to have that person uh, uh, doing with these qualifications, that, those kind of jobs, you have to say what's the requirements within the planning phase, within the proper work management part, to say these are the requirements uh, based on these qualities, uh, only these people can, uh, can, uh, can perform the work. But then again, you need to s uh, settle those requirements uh, uh, and uh, qualifications also on the individual people as well. Operations and, uh, and maintenance, it's, again, it's all about utilizing uh, uh, your, uh, your plant maintenance system, proper work management, uh, and even nowadays linear asset management instead of like only subsidiaries uh, of, of assets it can be pipelines, rails, uh, overhead cables uh, it being one asset but you can track that on a linear basis and track cost, uh, uh, can track cost uh, uh, and based on that you can uh, feed that into the system to see are we doing the right thing at the right time also, the uh, the service procurement. So it's it's all about the the supplier relationship management, which which provides you an innovative method to coordinate uh, your business processes with your key suppliers and make them more effective. So just in time management, uh, getting resources into your system, which uh, which again is part of the planning. Uh, and, and, and bring them on, on teams or supplier pools uh, and having a gain long-term relationship with suppliers and uh, having that credible data into the system as well. So they report back how many hours they have spent in, uh, on your assets as well. So instead of like having a purchase order out there to a certain amount and set it against an asset, you want to see the transparency maybe even on certain assets how many hours have been spent, so you have to have that full, full insight on how much hours are being spent and that gives you the ability to, to shift. Um, and looking at the spare parts management as well, enabling the full alignment with your work management and your spare part management, building up a proper bill of material in, in your object hierarchy, having the right spare parts on, on, on the shelf, uh, just in time management, uh, but also within project organizations with PS, be sure that you have your long lead times, uh, 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 spare parts uh, fairly uh, uh, adequately ordered, so you don't uh, exceed any uh, issues in uh, in uh, don't receiving the uh, parts on, on time. And and the last the capability is the mob, uh, mobility asset management. It's more about, about now how you are able to capture uh, qualified data and make it smart and simple for the end users as well. So see the mechanics out, out in the fields with a work manager or an inventory manager or a round manager, he or she has the ability to directly uh, feed the information back to your system instead of like the paper trail on the work order or building a note on their notepad and come back into a small office and then a data clerk types in the information. Information can be lost already instead of like the person can capture it straight away via, via a geo enablement or a tagging enablement. Uh, he or she tags the, the asset, fills in a, a quick quick reference sheet what he she has been doing and then that feeds back into the system and that drives uh, performance and evaluation. So I've seen, I've shown this picture already in a small uh, in a small uh, uh, scale before. So if you're looking at FASTA and you're looking at the SAP uh, 
uh, enterprise asset management solution by the, the life cycle. This is an example of, for instance, a utility company which we have done. On above you see our, our, uh, our framework. Our framework is all about the web pieces, about uh, supporting the asset life cycle activities and then uh, you have your processes uh, going outbound uh, and your capabilities uh, and processes outbound as well. And we have monitored uh, all the uh, ISO uh, requirements uh, which can be tackled uh, with SAP uh, within the little small uh, 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 purple, purple rounds on our framework. And if we're going into, and as I said, this is, is, a, is a roadmap solution, it's not a once-off, but when we do an assessment, for instance, we're looking at, if you look at the plan, design, construct, and operate and maintain, we're looking at what's the current, uh, the current usage of, uh, or maturity or SAP out there, or what kind of other enablement tools are they currently using, and how can we enable them or integrate, because it's a lot of things is about integrating uh, one single data source and utilize it many times. So you see the plan has PPM and investment management, the design is uh, compatible units and geo enablement, construct uh, compatible units uh, and of course uh, plants uh, uh, PS operation uh, to, to allow uh, worker safety, work clearance management, EHNS and as I said MII maintenance. It, again Predominantly is plant maintenance with the either or linear asset management uh, and mobility and material management enabled and reporting. It's all about the asset analytics uh, and, and nowadays it's more HANA because more information is pushing into the system because they can become smarter as I mentioned on the IT and OT. And that gives you the, 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 the strong leaders, the, the strong message that you can drive your asset man management system and, and monitor it and improve it uh, uh, every, every time. So if I look at the final, final summary, it's why it's, it's a, as you explained, it's a rapid changing market. So having your fundamental uh, processes uh, aligned in process your people and your IT enablement. It, it gives you many competition and priority and constraints. Uh, it causes a disconnect between strategy and uh, realization of your plans. And ISO just helps rebuilding your line of sight. It, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a very essential, essential piece which, uh, which, which can be utilized. So the challenge in getting from asset to plan is, is to connect risk and asset performance perspective. So as Jan explained very deeply, it's the risk versus the asset and linking the different perspectives is the data intensive industry. So depending on how many assets you have, this can be, uh, can be a challenge. So sophisticated asset planning tool become necessary. So Governmental uh, uh, laws nowadays are setting up, please provide me your asset management plan for the upcoming 50 years for, uh, for certain budget constraints or it is risk mitigation in regards to the municipal. So then you have to show them an insight, what's your strategic asset management plan? And that can be driven in, for instance, a PPM with a sophisticated tool on top of it for, for RIFA. And all based by credible information with resides in your enterprise asset management system in plant maintenance. So looking at this, the most recommendation is to, to, to start with a gap analysis. So where are you currently and building the roadmap towards you to get to your ambition level. So maybe certification is not the ambition level yet, but you want to utilize the guidance of the ISO 55000 and as seen, it's, uh, if you see the enablement in SAP, that's another one of that, that takes time to, to build up a proper foundation and uh, build up more maturity and building more uh, technologies, enablement to, uh, to, uh, to uh, give you the, all the necessary insights to manage, uh, manage the risk. So now I want to open it up for, uh, for Questions. So I'm looking at my question sheet.
I'll quickly, I'm quickly going through the panel to read it to you. Okay, I, I, there's one question. Um, uh, it's, it's about the lessons learned, uh, Jan. If, if you see, um, you're talking about the line of sight picture, and the question is, uh, is w where do you see the most challenges uh, within uh, your utility experience uh, uh, regards to uh, implementing uh, the ISO 55000? Yeah, that's um, uh, a good question. Um, what we most often have seen is that uh, it's not that companies don't have any of the uh, building blocks of the ISO 55000 already in place. It's more that they have many pieces, but uh, they are not con connected well with each other. Um, and uh, that's the biggest challenge, uh, to get these, establish these connections. Maybe you can go back to the picture where I have this line of sight, and I can show it with an example. Let me, let me quickly flip through it. Yeah, here yes. we are. So, I didn't explain it uh, uh, while I'll explain this picture, but you see that here there's a box in red. And you should wonder, so all the attendees probably use SAP uh, and they work with work orders. And you should wonder and ask yourself the question, uh, is every work order that I have connected to uh, a, a program in my portfolio and can I connect it to one or more of the risks and can I connect it to uh, these risks to one of or more of my strategic objectives? And probably if you give yourself an honest answer, uh, it, it, the answer is probably no, I cannot connect that. And that's what you see with the red one. And if you can't connect it and you can't establish it, it would probably mean that such a project does not create value in the new context, uh, does not create strategic value. So you could skip it without uh, taking an additional risk. And the interesting piece is to ask yourself, uh, if, you, if you look at your work orders, am I really uh, capable of making these connections and these tracking and tracing? And this is, this is most of the time the most difficult part because each company will give you uh, strategic objectives. Each, each company will show you, well, I have an enterprise risk register. I do have asset risks. Each company will have a portfolio of projects, OPEX, CAPEX projects, uh, and will create work orders. But are they really connected with each other, like in this picture? Is there really a line of sight? That's the tough piece of ISO 55000 implementation. Okay, thank you. thanks, Jan. Yeah, no, it absolutely answers my question. I, I will probably see the response back. And we got another question. What company or industry is a, a standard bearer of uh, the ISO 55000 implementation? And and I can only speak from my from my experience, but I I, I see it see uh, uh, and maybe you can reflect on this as well, Jan. It's I see it a lot of trending now currently in the uh, in the utility uh, in the utility market because of the pressure of uh, outside uh, regulatory bodies that they have to show that they have a proper asset management system in place and showing a roadmap which is which uh, which also uh, uh, is also 